Hi, uh, Hi. so we're from Royal Britannia Podcast and we got the chance to see Dungeons Dragons on Amongst Thieves uh, last week at the uh, press launch here in the UK. Absolutely loved it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, I guess let's get started off with a really easy question for you guys. What, you know, what was the experience like? What was your favourite part about actually being involved in this project? Um, for me, it was finding the chemistry between these very different actors. They're all so disparate in their own personalities that you wouldn't normally think of them as being friends, hanging out with each other willingly. But I think the circumstances of the film and the fact that they all have this common interest and the fact that they're all so dedicated to the work, that's kind of what brought them together in a way that felt kind of magical by the end of the film shoot. Um, I would say one of my favorite times was the first day we started with Hugh Grant um, because oh, yeah. he had always been who we had in mind when we were writing that role. Um, the fact that he said yes was both a surprise and a delight <laughs> to us. Yeah. Um, and so, and then when he came on set, we were fully, um, because we didn't have a lot of time to rehearse, it was really the first time we saw the character come to life and it was better than we had imagined. You know, he just brought all of that Hugh Grant-ism to it. <laughs> yeah, the phrase dream come true is often overused, but it was literally something that we dreamt up and then it came true. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that you did to, I mean, did everybody manage to get a D and D game in? Did you all play? Mm -hmm. we played, yeah. When they arrived in Belfast, we took about four hours of our precious rehearsal time, oh, okay. and we did a game with a, a, a DM from Seattle via Zoom, and um, they played as their characters. And it wasn't just sort of a lark; it actually gave us a lot of information because um, we got to see how they how they played, how they thought, and how they interacted. It also gave them a sense of the very unique tone that comes with playing Dungeons and Dragons, which really does set itself apart from most fantasy lore that you're familiar with. So you, you're all obviously quite big fans of uh, Dungeons and Dragons from everything I hear, mm -hmm. um, and you got to play. Yeah. So you know, how long have you been playing, and what what are your characters when you play? Um, I played as a kid, and then uh, as an adult, two years before we even started the movie played as a half-elf paladin called Ven Salafin, who has a name check in the movie. Um, and look, I think what we, the appeal that we saw with it was the fact that um, you can really do anything, and it's unlike any other game in that sense. And while that's hard to adapt, you know, word for word, because what story are you really adapting? What we're really adapting is the spirit of gameplay. And I was uh, about 11 when I played, and I, th I think I was a fighter because I was an 11-year-old boy, and I thought fighters were cool. Um, <laughs> but my brother, my older brother, was the DM, and he would kill me off pretty quickly. <laughs> so. If you could play one of the characters in the film, which character would you play and why? Um, you mean to take that actor's place in the actual movie? Yeah. Or, or if to play it in, in the, the context of an actual game? In the context of an actual game. Mm. Um... I think it would be fun to uh, to be a druid and be able to shapeshift into other animals like yeah. that. There's a lot of freedom to that. I'd like to play a Zank because he is clearly the most overqualified player <laughs> in the entire uh, story. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen an NPC last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's some really great nuances. Actually, that brings me on to a really, uh, really great question because we as D&D &D players, um, you know, we, we saw quite a lot of influences from... Dungeons and Dragons itself, and you know, even things like um, the, the the actions that take place. Sometimes a best laid plan goes completely wrong in, yeah. in almost on the roll of a dice, and even you know things like the combat, which feels almost sort of turn based mm -hmm. when, you, when it's going on. Was that intentional? Was yes. that some? It was. Mm -hmm. It was entirely intentional, um, and if you kind of look at it uh, through uh, a magnifying glass, you can really see that we paid attention to the details of the gameplay mechanics without ever compromising the cinematic storytelling, because obviously that comes first. So, out of the cast, who took their role the most seriously? Who really got into playing, or really got I into think, I think Justice Smith. Mm -hmm. he, um, he would call us on the weekend and oh, really? say, like, I've come up with a backstory. My father was this, and I'm a half this, and da 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 He really immersed himself in the lore. I have a feeling he does that for all the roles he plays, but yeah, he was really uh, deep. And he, I think, nails the accent, too, which, you know, was tricky when we first approached him, because we always saw that character, for whatever reason, having a British accent. 
Um, and we were all pleasantly surprised. In fact, Hugh thought he was British when he first saw him, and that's coming Perfect. from a Brit. So. He's done, yeah, no, it's, um, it's done really well. I, um, he, uh, again, just to bring back on to some of the amazing things that you sort of really have put into this film, there's a lot of little nods and little references to various bits and pieces, creatures from the game. Out of out of interest, do you know how many sort of like little Easter eggs almost have you sort of put into there? You mentioned that um, your character got got a name check yeah. in the film. You know what what have you squeezed in that audiences might not know about? Well, there's um, there's a language called Thoras. There's no written English in D and D, and we didn't want to put it on screen that way. So it, the Thoras is translatable. So it's if you technically it, accurate yeah, in the lore, you can find what those letters represent, uh, um, and you can. It, it all means something that you see on screen. Also, I would say that this is, has a lot of rewatchability potential because we made sure that there were a lot of kind of mini stories playing out in the background of any big scene where you see a lot of extras. Um, it wasn't just people walking from the left side of screen to the right. They're, they all had their own intentions, which I think added to the authenticity of the world that these characters are inhabiting. What? What part are you most proud of, of this film that you've made? The cemetery scene is one of our favorites. It, you know, we both grew up on Monty Python, and to oh, us yeah. that feels like the most Python-esque scene. We even talked about trying to get the surviving members of the cast of Python to come on, but <laughs> it was too expensive. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it, it really does capture the perfect meeting of D&D lore and the you know, raising the dead with the absurdity of what happens. And for me, I think it was a moment, and I won't give anything away, at the end that is pretty emotional, and being able to go to these screenings and see people actually touched by it and crying, that to us was a, a kind of a gratifying feat to be able to pull off because you wouldn't normally come into a Dungeons and Dragons movie thinking that it's gonna hit you where it hurts. Mm. Obviously, the answer is going to be because you love D&D, but are there any sort of real um, things that drew you to being involved in this project? Beyond our love of the game, I think it was the opportunity to do a fantasy movie that we haven't seen, honestly. Um, you know, Princess Bride maybe is the closest, and that was quite a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, because there is a, a fun side to D&D &D for most players, and we wanted to get that on screen, you know, without... It necessarily being, it's not a spoof, and we're not making fun of the world of, of the medieval fantasy, but, um, you know, I think it's a whole, it's a different take, and that was really appealing. Yeah. Um, now, from playing the game for so long, and for someone who has never played it before, what advice would you give to a, a new Dungeons and Dragons player for the first time? Well, I think first, you, you gotta, you gotta want to play. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I would say let your imagination run wild. Um, it is that, that freedom that you have with the gameplay that you may sort of lean toward the more conventional decisions, but the most fun I think you can have out of the game is really kind of bending the rules and seeing how far you can frustrate your DM, <laughs> because that to me calls for the best kind of uh, campaign. <laughs> So have you ever DM'd yourself, or is it, uh, have you only ever played? That's too much work. I can't do it. <laughs> it's just too much. I mean, we're, we're DMing every time we write a script, um, but uh, it, maybe if I had a lot of free time, I wouldn't want to tackle it, but it's pretty daunting. <laughs> well, I guess um, one of the questions we really wanted to know is, is there likely to be a sequel, and can we have parts in it? <laughs> <laughs> is this an audition? Yeah, no, we're in. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Just walking from right to left. Got 160 episodes of podcasts you can listen to. If you, like. <laughs> you know, our, our I don't know if you're talking to our producer, Jeremy Latcham, but he has a mantra that we followed, which it comes from the early Marvel days, um, which is just make one good movie. And if it's successful, worry about a sequel. But we put everything into this. We did not really plant seeds to lead to a later story. Um, there is a ton we can do because the world's so big and in success we'd be psyched to jump back in. But we honestly haven't spent much time thinking about a sequel. That said, if you guys want to be in the movie, you have to be fluent in common. Uh. <laughs> and you're going to want to put on about 30 pounds of muscle. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that's been absolutely fantastic to speak to you today. Um, Thank you. It's, it's just that we love the movie so much. Um, we were delighted to actually have been able to, to see it really. Such a, such a, you know, a sneak preview that we got. Um, and we can't wait to share it with everyone. And uh, 
thank you so much for actually taking the time to make it. Oh, well, <laughs> yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Can't wait to see it again. Honestly, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.